A Vatican cardinal and nine other Catholic bishops joined together in a rite of contrition. Contrition for the sexual abuse of children by priests and for the failure of church officials to protect victims and punish perpetrators. A symbolic exercise in purification that comes just as the Vatican calls on the world's bishops to make a unified response to clerical sex abuse. I'm Frank Rocca. And I'm Carol Glass. The penitential rite held February 7th in Rome's Church of St. Ignatius came during a week-long symposium attended by representatives of 110 bishops of conferences and 30 religious orders. The conference held at Rome's Pontifical Gregorian University was meant to help bishops and orders comply with a Vatican mandate to develop anti-abuse norms no later than this May. The Holy Father began this conference with a letter and he said the number one priority was the healing of victims. So you, you see a major shift in, in the church's perspective in saying, you know, victims first. When, when you listen to victims, you kind of get it, frankly. You, you, you understand the pain and trauma caused, and it mobilizes uh, the bishops to really want to do something uh, aggressively about this. Canadian Cardinal Mark Willet, Prefect of the Vatican's Congregation for Bishops, presided over the penitential vigil. It began in darkness, meant to reflect the creation of life from nothingness and the shadow of sin that has been present almost from the beginning. In his homily, Cardinal Willet called on Christ for the courage and humility needed to ask forgiveness, build trust, and avoid further failures. Several of the bishops in the vigil had experienced sex abuse scandals in their home diocese. Cardinal Sean Brady, primate of all Ireland, came under fire two years ago when he admitted his failure to tell police about abuse accusations against a priest in the 1970s. He later apologized, but said he wouldn't resign and would instead stay on as a wounded healer. Cardinal Willet was one of a group that included a bishop, a priest, a nun, a teacher, and an abuse victim, representatives of different types of people affected by the abuse crisis, who took part in a special ceremony near the end of the vigil. Each lit a candle and blessed himself with holy water. The victim, an Irish woman named Marie Collins, asked God for the strength to forgive. The next day, the Vatican's top sex abuse investigator spoke to the conference and denounced the deadly culture of silence that has surrounded sex abuse within the church. The investigator, Monsignor Charles Shakluna, then told reporters that bishops who shield or fail to discipline pedophile priests should face greater accountability under church law. One listener who was especially impressed by Monsignor Shakluna's words was Marie Collins. Speaking to the Irish Times newspaper, she singled out the investigator's talk for praise when reflecting on the conference's impact. She also said that the sight of cardinals asking for forgiveness was something that she could not have imagined even five years earlier. Admitting that she had come to Rome feeling suspicious and cynical about the conference, Collins said that the event had been a huge changing point for how she felt about the church. A sign of progress then in at least one case toward the healing and renewal that the symposium's organizers had hoped they would be able to promote. I'm Carol Glass. And I'm Frank Rocca, Catholic News Service.